Let's take a look at a team that we've been wondering about uh, in terms of their roster and how it's going to look for the 2022 season. Orlando Pride, we thought they might have been done, but that's that's not true. They're still a part of ongoing trade discussions. Most recently, trading Ellie Riley to Angel City, Orlando getting a 2023 NWSL third round draft pick and $15,000 in allocation Money, the New Zealand international, but American born, uh, kind of a California native heading on back home. So in terms of people who are trying to keep track of a timeline of talent loss from Orlando Pride during this offseason, we are now at the following Orlando uh, losing Alex Morgan, Jody Taylor heading on over to Wave FC, Ellie Krieger and Ashton Harris and their baby girl Sloan heading on over to Gotham FC. Uh, we also talked about uh, their top draft pick in Mia Official uh, opting to sign with Tigres Feminil of Liga Mekis Feminil. Uh, and then Taylor Korniak also departing for Wave FC. And now Ellie Riley heading on over to Angel City FC. A uh, lot of trades, a lot of allocation money involved uh, throughout a lot of these trades. I think we're talking about perhaps just a little over a million dollars now, I think, in allocation money. There has been a ton uh, going going back and forth uh, alongside of this. And um, a lot of uh, maybe Orlando Pride fans taking a look and saying, geez, like what's going on with, with the roster here? What's it going to look like uh, in terms of having somebody like a, a Sydney LaRue or a Martha, who there hasn't been a lot of uh, noise made about that. Um, but Orlando has, behind the scenes, also sort of been – conducting their usual business and making their signings for some of their rookies as well, uh, making uh, contracts uh, for uh, their first round draft pick and Julie Doyle, a forward out of Santa Clara, a one year contract with an option for an extra year uh, and signing Michaela Clough through 2023, uh, who was a 2021 Matt Herman trophy finalist. So on the one hand, making a ton of moves, right. For allocation money and sort of uh, seeing this departure of, of, of players who were so synonymous with Orlando pride, but also trying to lock up some contracts with some of the rookies that I think they're hoping to build around. And just when we thought Lisa, that we were going to hop onto this episode and record and get it all in with Orlando pride. There was another announcement that was made in terms of a trade. Yes. The Orlando keeps um, sending their players away. I'm going to say not losing them. I don't know. It sure looks like a, a loss to me when you run down that list of everyone uh, trading midfielder Marissa Vigiano to Houston dash. Um, and uh, it's just an interesting trade there between Marissa Vigiano, midfielder, and then Megan Montefusco, who is formerly uh, Megan Oyster heading to Orlando Pride in addition to $30,000 in allocation money and OL Reigns natural third round pick in the 2023 NWSL draft. Um, so that is all happening to Orlando Pride. So now in addition to Alex Morgan, Jody Taylor, Krieger, Harris, Mia Fischel, Taylor Korniak, Ali Riley, now it's Marissa Vigiano, um, an attacking midfielder that has been with Orlando and been with the Pride since Vigiano was drafted in 2019, but she is headed to Houston. So Houston lucking out a little bit, um, getting another midfielder to throw into the mix. And remember, Houston lost Christy Mewis. That was sent to Gotham. That was during the expansion draft. Um, and then thereafter with a little bit of trading happening. So Orlando, they're just, they're doing a lot of things that I'm not super um, knowledgeable about why they're doing this. So I'm a little bit confused because you do have to look at who's left for Orlando. I know you mentioned Marta and Sydney LaRue. Cindy LaRue, excuse me, and then now signing all of these younger players in Michaela Clough, um, who, who they selected in 2021 that chose to go back and play for BYU. And then also Julie Doyle. They have a lot of young players um, mixed with Marta and Sin Sydney LaRue, who are very much veteran players. I think that or Amanda Cromwell at Orlando just... Um, she needs a little bit of help, a little bit of time to kind of figure things out and in gathering so many draft picks for the 2023 season, I think she has her eyes set on the future and not so much this season. And this season really will be a rebuilding year for Orlando. Um, there have been a, a number of other signings throughout the league, though. Uh, uh, let's stick with North Carolina Courage. At this point, they signed Keeney Bowen 
from Kansas City. So North Carolina and Sean Nahas gathering some players there. And then also uh, some potential retirement news, Sandra? <laughs> Question mark? I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. That's how we got to, I guess, address this one. I mean, uh USC announcing that Amy Rodriguez is going to be joining their coaching staff, which is huge. Congratulations to her, uh, a World Cup champion, an Olympic gold medalist, going to be joining that uh, the collegiate program uh, as an assistant coach. She's an alumni who's making her return, finished playing uh, with the Trojans in 2008, and then was uh, pretty much a mainstay forward with the United States women's national team uh, from 2005 through uh, about 2018. And uh, was currently with North Carolina Courage, uh, made her arrival there to, to Courage Country uh, through a midseason trade with Kansas City Current. So seeing this news kind of come out, it, it broke through the collegiate side of things. It came through USC saying, hey, we've added Amy Rodriguez to our staff because she will, and referring to it because she'll be retiring uh, from uh, playing professionally. And it was just a little peculiar to, to sort of see that and then sort of not see uh, any type of retirement announcements uh, via North Carolina Courage, right? Uh, or, or even the league uh, for that matter. This is a player who has been playing for a very long time, ending her career at 34 years old. Again, you know, mentioning that, yes, World Cup champion, Olympic gold medalist, but this is a player who was with one of the founding franchises of NWSL and won two championships with the then FC Kansas City uh, team from, from the Kansas City team that was, you know, way back in the early days and kind of coming back to Kansas City with the current it's to sort of try to help uh, – relaunch a women's pro team uh, in that market in that area and then to be traded mid-season to North Carolina Courage uh, to sort of help them out in their kind of late season uh, push to, to make a return to the playoffs which which they did uh, but this is probably one of the most decorated probably one of the most uh, important players in the early histories of NWSL and uh, I really do think she should be celebrated as such uh, yeah. in terms of just her accomplishments you know uh, on the pitch uh, but this is a huge pickup I think if you're looking at the college program side of things uh, for for USC they are absolutely getting a baller in this one this is a huge player. I mean, I, I remember watching her as a little girl on, on the women's national team, watching A-Rod cheering for her um, and then to see her go through the evolution of starting a family and having children and then working her ass off to get back into top shape and do just that. But when you look at North Carolina, we talked at, about all that Orlando had lost. North Carolina, they've lost uh, Lynn Williams. They've lost Sam Mewis. They've lost Jess McDonald and now Amy Rodriguez. So interesting for North Carolina. A lot of their attacking weapons um, are gone after this year. So it's another team that we have to keep an eye on, I think. Uh, but as you mentioned, this is a huge, huge get for USC, her alma mater. She's heading back there and for the future, right? I mean, we talked about Chicago. They don't have a head coach. They're still looking for one to have former players that are retiring and stepping immediately into coaching roles, even assisting coaching roles. That's huge. You, you can learn so much and at a high college level, it's good for the future, right? We could maybe see a rod coaching an NWSL club in a few years. I'm putting it out there. Manifest it, Sandra. <laughs> I would love to see it. I absolutely would. I'm not even trying to say that I wouldn't, I would love to see it. I mean, California has got two teams out there, you know, who knows, maybe they'll be expanding those staffs as well. We'll see. Uh, oh, Rain also making news uh, not to be left out uh, in terms of uh, off-season news, announcing Megan Rapino on a one-year contract and Rose Lavelle on a two-year contract. Both of the contracts for Rapino and Lavelle utilizing allocation money coming off of United States Women's National Team Federation contracts. These are contracts directly with the club. Uh, also making the announcement that Bethany Balser is going to be returning to the club, signing a contract extension for a three-year deal all the way through 2025, and then also re-signing another veteran of the club, defender Lauren Barnes. Lou is getting a one-year deal with the team. So got to look through all of these signings. And honestly, if you're an OL Reign fan, I think if you're looking at these, these are all clutch signings. I think a lot of folks are very, very excited to see 
Rose Lavelle on a two year contract. I think getting her mid season right last year in 2021, you just sort of saw maybe some of the beginnings of what could be happening with Lavelle on a Laura Harvey led side. Uh, and I think for oh, all right, I think these are all home runs for sure. These have to be home runs. It's almost along the lines of the Christine Sinclair re-signing with Portland Thorns. It's a little bit of security heading into the 2022 season with, with Rapino, Lavelle, Balser. I, I love to see a three-year deal for undrafted Bethany Balser. Remember in 2019, um, she's a player that continues to grow. And I think under head coach Laura Harvey, can have a lot of growth there. So I'm really excited for Bethany Balser. And then, of course, uh, Lou Barnes getting that one-year deal, another veteran um, defender that can do a lot. So it's a lot of stability and security for OL Reign fans. Um, Kansas City Current, they are also – uh, saying goodbye to a few of their players, defender Rachel Corsi, the Scottish international. She signs with Aston Villa as well as forward Jessica Silva. She was traded to Benfica in Portugal. So losing two players in, in a defender and a forward. But uh, as we talked about, right, Lynn Williams, Sam Ewis heading over to Kansas City. There's so many trades happening throughout this offseason. My boards are going to be a mess for 2022. Uh, we talked about it a little bit before racing Louisville. They acquired Jess McDonald. It's official though. She signed a two-year contract with Racing Louisville. So she'll be a veteran forward leadership for Louisville that they really need um, heading into the 2022 season. They, they lost Yuki Nagasato. Savannah McCaskill is gone from there. Michelle Betos. It's a, a little bit of changeover happening in Louisville as well. Absolutely. And San Diego can't be left out of the mix, right? They still made Ever. one more move. Joining uh, joining the side uh, is going to be Carly Telford from uh, Chelsea. Goalkeeper solidifying uh, that goalkeeper position. They've already got uh, it was uh, Kaylin Sheridan as their starting goalkeeper. And then adding uh, a veteran piece like this, I think, is great for uh, a one-two punch, I think, of their uh, goalkeeping uh, union there that they're starting to build out in San Diego. A lot there to get through, but we got through it together, Lisa. We did get there, Sandra, and, and a lot has happened and a lot continues to happen. And as we're on the verge of the NWSL 2022 preseason starting, so many question marks surrounding there. There's so many more things that we will be coming at to our listeners with information and everything ahead because so much is happening and continues to happen. And we've got it all for you here. That's what we do, Sandra. That's what we do. We do have it all, including AFC Women's Cup matches on Paramount+. Plus. I just want to remind everyone that quarterfinals are going to be kicking off this week. So try not to miss a game. But if you do, I understand the kickoff times are a little bit inconvenient stateside. But if you miss it, you can catch full highlights on Attacking Third. YouTube, visit YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. 